Rocking ahead to the summer that same year, Mike Tyson was truly unleashed. Come one, come all, because nobody can get close to me. They're not even close. I'm the best fighter in the world. Gone was old school mentor Kevin Rooney, replaced by a posse of new Jackie Yes men. I mean, if things are right, I'll fight anyone in any place in their backyard. <laughs> also gone, and you need to pretend like he wasn't the best. Mike was still unbeaten and seemingly unbeatable, but for how much longer? As it turns out, just long enough to beat this guy. Number one contender, Carl The Truth Williams. Carl was a scary looking six foot four with an enormous reach advantage. But the truth about the truth was, he couldn't really handle the left hook. Bite your tongue and your ear. This is Mike Tyson we're talking about here. Just 23 and already considered a legend. Why? Because he was Awesome! Devastating left hook. Surprise, Carl! It's your old pal the left hook coming back to haunt you. On the replay here. Ooh! Check out the timing and the power of Mike Tyson. He ducks the left jab, plants his feet, starts winding up. Down goes Williams right, up jumps the devil, and here's your head, what's your hurry? Flamouche! Mike Tyson had done it again. What'd you expect? Perfectly timed as Williams was dropping the right hand. Referee Randy Newman waves this one off at 1 minute 32 seconds. Williams can't believe it. Hey, minute 32 is good. In a list of Mike's quickest knockouts, that doesn't even crack the top 10. What a specimen by Mike Tyson here. He is awesome. But Carl's corner is fit to be tied. They think the ref stopped it suspiciously too soon. And truthfully, the truth probably could have lasted longer, but not much longer. For Mike, the controversy was just an appetizer for what the near future held. In February, he'd suffer his first ever defeat. And after that, it's just kind of like one long double bad hair day. November 13th, 1985, back when people still underestimated Mike Tyson. All you come get some, because Mike Tyson's out here. He's waiting for you. All come get some. Sure, at the time, he was just a 19-year-old kid with a palooka-inflated record. But here comes reason number one why you ought to take him seriously. Richardson goes down from a perfectly timed counter right. The very first blow from that monster right hand sets the tone for what promises to be a very short evening. Watch how he strides up and into the punch so he can reach the face of his taller opponent, the enormous Eddie Richardson. Richardson has felt the power in Mike Tyson. Or, as he was known to boxing fans worldwide, Eddie who? He was the size of a power forward. He had Mike beat on reach by a full 12 inches. Unfortunately, Eddie was a mere mortal going up against a boxing god. Try and wrap your mind around this knockout. Tyson plans a pile driving left and sends Richardson flying across the ring. What? That did not just happen. Six foot six dude not just go flying like he was shot out of a cannon. Wait, 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 play that again. I want to see if that was a special effect or something. All right, here it comes. And there he goes. Richardson practically flies through the air across the ring and lands on his back. Richardson's head ends up like 15 feet away from point of impact. Of course, Tyson wasn't completely unscathed. He pulled a muscle in his neck, throwing that anvil fist to his. I have no doubt in my mind that I could go 10 or 15 rounds. I have no worry, I'm never worried. I'm Mike Tyson, and there's no one like me. November 22nd, 1986. We're in Vegas, baby, and Iron Mike has firmly established himself as arguably the most unstoppable force in boxing history. I don't know, I'm just an athlete trying to accomplish the objective of being the best in your field. At this point in his incredible career, and this fighting phenom out of Brooklyn has won his first 27 fights. Yeah, you heard me, 27. But this match in the middle of the Nevada desert is going to be his biggest test yet. When you see big Mike Tyson come for you, you better head in the other direction in a hurry. He's taking on the reigning WBC world champion, Trevor Babic. The 34-year-old Burbick has beaten three world champions in his incredible career. 
but somehow he's not even favored in this one. Skipping ahead to round two, Burbick tries to tie Tyson up, but pow pow, Mike rocks him with a vicious combo. He's gotta be woozy after that crushing cup of punch Tyson just served him. Oh, and Kid Dynamite connects with a straight left right between the eyes. Tyson straight right down the pipe. He's got the champ on the ropes, looking to put him on life support. Nadeus, boom goes Kid Dynamite. That left hand is devastating. He hit the canvas very hard. Holy cow, did he deliver. All right, first Tyson sets the pain table with a killer right that's kidney-licious. Verbeck feels the breeze from a missed uppercut, then feels the pain from a sweeping left hook. Oh, that's got monster migraine written all over it. The fight is over! The Vegas crowd goes nuts. The champ has just rolled snake eyes and crapped out. I said there was emotion in this building, and it's not just coming from the stands. You think Tyson knew how to bring it? They don't make him like this guy. In the way, I don't care who they are at the moment. They're just, people might say opponents, but as I say, I'm just going through them because this is for real, and Mike Tyson's for real. The date is December 6, 1985. The place is the Felt Forum in Madison Square Garden. By now, Tyson is a 19-year-old wrecking ball and ready to make his New York City fighting debut. Iron Mike, at this point in his young career, has beaten the first 13 guys he's faced. Wait a minute, did I say beat? I meant destroyed. I'm the master of the pinpoint. My, my shots are so accurate and so precise. I just can't help it who you are. You have to go down because there's a law when Mike Tyson hits you. Tonight, getting his chance in the beat down barrel is slamming Sammy Scaff. Scaff began his promising career with five straight KOs, but since then, the slammer's kind of more often been the slam E. Scaff, a man who could definitely benefit from a full body wax, will try to hold his own against arguably the most explosive fighter the game's ever known. Oh, and early in round one, Tyson tags the big man right in the beak. It's a trademark vicious Tyson left hook, and it's done big time damage. Scaff trying to shake off the effects of that whistling left. The blood gates have opened as Scaff does his best Chuck Webner impersonation. Iron Mike follows up with another brutal left. Scaff has the height, weight, and reach advantage, but all Tyson sees is a bigger target. Scaff gamely stays in there with that looks to be a proper nose. Uh oh, Mike Zero in. Looking for an opening. The goon. He got him with a left hand and he's out of here. Tyson tags him, tucks him in. Good night. Adios, amigo. With blood gushing from his nose, Scaff tries to stay in this thing. But a couple of synchronized misses from both men leaves the big man wide open. Tyson whips around a vicious left hook. And slamming Sammy goes slamming to the canvas. This fight is over! Tyson wins his fighting debut in the Big Apple. And he leaves Sammy Scaff with a broken nose as a parting gift. Well, you know what they say in New York. If you can break it here, you can break it anywhere. Okay, no one says that. No, I'm sorry, I even did. Fire that rider. The left hook drops Sam in his own corner. For all of my fights, I don't get hit. I never have, I yet to have a bloody nose. I never had marks on my face. Atlantic City, New Jersey. 10 to 1, you don't make it. October 9th, 1985. One of the most pivotal nights of Mike Tyson's young career. He's already knocked out the first eight fools who stepped to him professionally, but most of them in the first round. But the experts thought this one was going to be different. They were all smitten with a guy named Donnie Long. Long is an interesting character. He used to wear a spiked dog collar way before punk rock was popular. And he'd already done hard time in prison for murder. He was a six foot two one man wrecking crew with a 12 and 0 record. Had Kid Dynamite finally met his match? Hardly. 37 seconds in. Tyson practically knocks him through the ropes with a wicked left. Hey, how you doing? Tyson slips a punch and lands his own powerful left. During his standing eight count, you can tell Long is stunned and someone smells blood in the water. 
Tyson unleashing deadly combination. Long is hurt. 26 seconds, and about a thousand punches later, Donnie Long is down again, and he really should have stayed there. He tells the referee he's okay. Because now Tyson's got him locked in his sights. He plans on introducing him to the left hook twins. One of them is named Ga, and the other's named Good. Two left hooks, and Long crumbles. It's all over. Mike Tyson makes short work along, putting him on his keister three times in the first 88 seconds. First, with a pile-driving left hook from, like, the center of his soul. Next, with this vicious combo platter. Oh, it hits nothing left, a pair of blocking right uppercuts, top with a, another crisp, zesty left. Any pounds of this and finally, the coup de gouge. Yet another emphatic left hook. Two left hooks and long crumbles. It's all over. That knockout must have knocked some sense into him, because he turned his life around after this fight and became a minister. True story. So there you have it. The kid's winning streak stayed intact and would stretch on for another 28 fights, too. Once again, Tyson's fist sends shockwaves throughout the heavyweight division. It's a packed Madison Square Garden in New York City, June 13th, 1986. And all eyes are on the Brooklyn Bomber, the fighting phenom known as Mike Tyson. Tyson comes into this one with a 21 zip record. An incredible 12 wins for my first round knockout. It's earned him the name Kid Dynamite. Tonight, the only thing standing in the kid's way of notching another W is journeyman boxer Reggie Gross. His 78-inch reach could give Tyson some trouble. As usual, Tyson comes in his opponent like he left something boiling on the stove, and he's got to get back home. Tyson's looking to connect with one of his paralyzing punches, but he's not landing as many shots as usual. Tyson misses with a wicked left. Mike was warned before this one that Gross wasn't just some chump in shorts. The guy's got serious skills. Tyson forces Reggie into the corner and goes to work. He's pounding the body, searching for an opening to put this guy away. Suddenly, Gross opens up while Tyson misses with a looping left. And look at this. Gross is bringing it to Tyson. He's got him bobbing and weaving. Pausa. Tyson lands a vicious left and timber. The man tree goes down. Oh, Mike unloads an electrifying left that sends a shockwave through Gross's body. But for some reason, the guy's still among the living. He's ready for more, and Tyson's more than happy to give it to him. Madaboosh! Oh, the kid unloads the dynamite. Have a seat, Mr. Gross. Take a load off. Mike's had enough of this foolishness and uncorks a savage right that just misses. But it opens up Gross for a couple of brutal lefts. Jibba jabba, jabba jabba. A right uppercut almost sends Gross's head sailing off the Bayonne, and the big man is meat. Two crushing lefts, and it's all over. Mike Tyson scores a sensational first round knockout over Reggie Gross in Madison Square Garden. The kid remains undefeated. And Gross can tell his grandkids one day that the great Mike Tyson once abused him in front of 20,000 fans. A proud moment indeed. It's time to recognize the true boxing giant. All hail the king of the ring. July 26, 1986, Lens Falls, New York. The fight experts agreed would finally test the metal of that unstoppable force in the black trunks, Mr. Mike Tyson. Mike mowed through his first two dozen opponents like a weed whacker in a daisy patch. But none of his victims had any business being in the same area code as Tyson, let alone the same ring. But tonight was supposed to be different. Tonight, Tyson had the son of legendary Smoke and Joe Frazier to deal with. One Marvis Frazier. This wasn't just some brat with a fancy pedigree. Marvis was a gifted fighter who could seriously bring it. Unfortunately, he forgot to bring it tonight, and Tyson punished Frazier from the opening bell and did not let up. 
All Marvis could do was back into the corner. He was practically defenseless against the onslaught. Until finally, Tyson finishes him off with the old onesie twosie, 23 skidoozie. Wow, what an emphatic beatdown. Oh, that was smoking. We should go over that again, blow by blow in slow-mo. Make sure we didn't miss anything. Okay, let's check the invoice. We have one big right uppercut. Check, okay, and then another, but even more devastating. Yeah, check. And last but not least, the apocalyptic right hook left cross combo kit. Oh yeah, check, double check. Tyson just shocked them floppy in exactly 30 seconds. I, I feel so confident, and I knew deep down in my blood that I was going to stop him in the first round. It would be the shortest fight of the great man's career, and he seals it with a kiss. You can do that when you're Mike Tyson. Anybody saw all of my fights, I don't get hit. I never have, I yet to have a bloody nose. I never had marks on my face. Atlantic City, New Jersey. 10 to 1, you don't make it. October 9th, 1985. One of the most pivotal nights of Mike Tyson's young career. He's already knocked out the first eight fools who stepped to him professionally, but most of them in the first round. But the experts thought this one was going to be different. They were all smitten with a guy named Donnie Long. Long is an interesting character. He used to wear a spiked dog collar way before punk rock was popular. And he'd already done hard time in prison for murder. He was a six foot two one man wrecking crew with a 12 and 0 record. Had Kid Dynamite finally met his match? Hardly. 37 seconds in, Tyson practically knocks him through the ropes with a wicked left. Hey, how you doing? Tyson slips a punch and lands his own powerful left. During his standing eight count, you can tell Long is stunned and someone smells blood in the water. Tyson unleashing deadly combination. Long is hurt. 26 seconds, and about a thousand punches later, Donnie Long is down again, and he really should have stayed there. He tells the referee he's okay. Because now Tyson's got him locked in his sights. He plans on introducing him to the left hook twins. One of them is named Ga, and the other's named Good. Two left hooks, and Long crumbles. It's all over. Mike Tyson makes short work along, putting him on his keister three times in the first 88 seconds. First, with a pile driving left hook from like the center of his soul. Next, with this vicious combo platter. Oh, I hit snapping left, a pair of blocking right uppercuts, top with another crisp, zesty left. And finally, the coup de gouge. Yet another emphatic left hook. Two left hooks and long crumbles. It's all over. That knockout must have knocked some sense into him, because he turned his life around after this fight and became a minister. True story. So there you have it. The kid's winning streak stayed intact and would stretch on for another 28 fights, too. Once again, Tyson's fist sends shockwaves throughout the heavyweight division. Nassau Coliseum, Union Dale, New York, March 10th, 1986. Most fans are here to see that guy in the white trunks, the 10th ranked heavyweight contender. Who you might know better as Mike Tyson. Still in the process of building his ferocious reputation. He's taking on Milwaukee's favorite stepson, Steve Zuski. Pre-fight, most experts filed Zuski under J for just another meatbag here to pick up a check and get tossed to the Lions. Well, I expect a good fight, but as always, I expect to be victorious at the end of the fight. Yet here it is in round three, and he's still on his feet. It's a lot more than most guys can say. Remember, by now, Tyson was 18-0, all by knockout, with 12 of those coming in the first round. Yikes! You don't last this long with Tyson in the prime on guts alone, so Stuski definitely had some game. And he merits at least a footnote in boxing history. Why? Because his face was ground zero for one of the biggest, nastiest, earth shatteringest left hook bombs ever dropped. I kid you not, because here it comes. Get ready for it. Count down! Oh, the humanity. Please, please, let's see that again. 
Back in the day, opponents were so preoccupied with Mike's right, they forgot about that old southern inbound locomotive, the Left Hook Express. Next up, Palookaville. That's where Steve Zuski gets off. ka -choo, choo That probably felt worse than getting hit by a train. My face hurts just watching it. Tyson doesn't even raise his hands in victory. For him, epic knockouts are just another day at the office. I guess that's life when you're one of the kings of the ring. May 9th, 1986. Another historic stop of the march to greatness. I'm in there for greatness and peace of mind, and I'm sure I, I love the sport. If I wasn't there just for the financial back, back, background, I wouldn't do as well as I'm doing now. Still six months away from winning the title, but already an unbeaten 19 knockout nationwide sensation. And that pain train seemed destined to keep her rolling tonight against James Quick Tillis, the fighting cowboy. He was famous for flaming out early, and Tyson was notorious for taking guys out early. Tyson in the black trunks, and James Quick Tillis in the white. So it seemed like a match made in knockout heaven. This was gonna be perfect, except for one thing. Tillis stubbornly refused to go down, no matter what kind of punishment Iron Mike laid on him. Boy, that left hand is devastating. That is until the fourth round, when Tyson took Tillis downtown with a tasty left hook. Say cheese. He lunges in against Cody. Drops Tillis onto the seat of his pants. He totally blindsided him. Tillis lunges in with an all or nothing haymaker, and Tyson ducks right under it. In fact, he actually emerges behind Tillis. And when James turns around, peekaboo! Well, that last knockout took a little longer than expected, but at least, what the? He's still standing? But how? The left hand drops Tillis onto the seat of his pants as round four is coming to a close. Um, James, you got a little something hanging right? Ah, uh, never mind. Not only did Tillis not go quickly into that good night, he actually became the first guy to ever go the distance against Tyson. Tyson's consecutive knockout string ends at 19, but it doesn't knock the cocky out of Kid Dynamite. And I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. The fighters anxiously wait for a decision. Mike still won the unanimous decision, of course, but James Quick Tillis finally shook his reputation as a no stamina stumble bum once and for all. Hey, you take your victories where you can get them. I feel so confident, and I knew deep down in my blood that I was going to stop him in the first round. Those weren't just the words of a cocky fighter. They were a warning to anyone who dared to step into the ring with Mike Tyson. We jumpstart our look at this weapon of mass destruction by going back to the beginning, back when Iron Mike was hammering him down in a heartbeat. April 10th, 1985. A rising star has burst onto the heavyweight scene. He's an 18-year-old ball of iron named Mike Tyson. And he's on his way to becoming the hardest hitting puncher in the game. I plan on staying at box. I would like to box for at least a good 20 years, because I love the game. In only the second pro fight of his career, Kid Dynamite is out to prove he's as good as everyone says he is. With devastating power and relentless pressure, this team phenom is like the second coming of the Messiah. And heaven help anyone who gets in his way. Tonight, that dubious honor goes to Trent Singleton. I could say he's got skills. Eh, let's cut to the chase. He's facing Tyson. He better also have signed a will. Just one month earlier in his pro debut, Tyson scored a first round knockout by demolishing Hector Mercedes. Raw talent is just oozing out of this guy's shorts. Oh, yeah, I just grossed myself out. Oh! He got hit with a lot of bombs in the round. Singleton regroups, shakes it off, and to his credit, keeps fighting. Only one problem, he's still facing Tyson. Singleton goes down again, this time from a brutal left hook. The left hook did some damage. Tyson's gotta be wondering, why can't I put this guy away? Singleton's gotta be thinking, is it too late to change careers? And you saw the explosion.
explosive punching power, which has made him the talk of the heavyweight division. Singleton goes down a third time, and that's going to end it. The ref has seen enough. He doesn't want to have to call in the corner. This final sequence is classic Tyson. With a flurry of fists, he's got Singleton reeling. But it's what doesn't happen that's truly amazing. On his knees, Singleton's thinking of getting up. Tyson's right there, ready to knock his head into Canada. He can't see the right hand coming. Ever have your light flash in front of your eyes? Singleton has about 10 flashes in front of his. No one really knows what that moment ultimately did to Singleton's psyche. But chew on this. Singleton never fought again. It took Tyson only 52 seconds to destroy his opponent. He was on his way to discovering that bringing the hurt in a hurry would be a hard habit to break. The fight is over with stunning swiftness. 